The main focus of our project was temperament. When we first began doing our research, we had to figure out what is temperament. Temperament can best be defined as individual differences in emotion, activity level, and attention. This theory was founded by Alexander Thomas and Stella Chess. With their experiments and their scientific research, they found that it would be easiest to experiment with babies since they start at the beginning of development. They found that there were three categories, easy babies, difficult babies, and slow to warm up babies. According to their research, a lot of the results showed that infants would come across as a combination of all three of these categories as opposed to just one, creating the between-person approach. After working with this approach for a while, they transitioned into the within-person approach. This consisted of five dimensions and five traits that all infants or children possessed. They then created the infant-child behavior questionnaire, which would be used by parents, teachers, or scientists doing research on temperament. They would average these scores after asking them a wide range of questions. And within their research, they found that all of these questions and scores resulted in a fairly stable pattern over time and could later predict development. Another large debate around the idea of temperament was whether it's nature or nurture-based. Nature refers to the biology or genetics of how a person was made up. An example of this could be that identical twins have a more similar emotional regulation than fraternal twins do. On the other hand, nurture is environment-based. This can refer to birth defects, parent influence, or having a harsh or supportive home environment growing up. One thing that supported this was the twin study. A group of identical and fraternal twins, same-sex twins, and opposite-sex twins were put through different tests to determine three aspects, effort for effortful control, negative affectivity, and extroversion. The results found that a chaotic and unsafe home environment played a role. Another large thing that played a role was parents' temperament. This could be caused through gene transmission as well as the home environment that created for their children. So in conclusion, nature and nurture both play equal effects on a child's temperament and how they grow up. We know that temperament looks at the individual from many perspectives um, for their differences. And so this includes their emotion, their activity level, and their attention. But for our specific current study, we want to examine whether the activity level of a child remains consistent as they age. In order to do this, we wanted to look at younger children and older children and look at any possible differences or connections. Our group hypothesis is that the activity level of a child remains consistent as they age. For the method, um, subjects and settings, for the subjects, the subjects of this experiment were children ages 5 to 7, classified as the younger children, and children ages 9 to 11, classified as the older children. Also involved in this experiment are the parents of these children and what they believe their child's temperament was when their child was a baby. And then for the settings, the experiment was done in a plethora of different settings, so many different settings. Some of the different settings include the in the subject's home, so the children's home, over a Zoom call if they were unable to meet in person, um, or FaceTime outside, uh, like in a driveway or at a park, in a coffee shop, um, in the examiner's home, so whoever's conducting the survey, and many. So for the actual procedure, there were two questionnaires done, um, one for the child and one for the parent. So for the child one, the examiner asked both the older and the younger child to answer one through five, one being not like them at all and five being very much like them, to statements about their temperament. There were about 20 statements total on the questionnaire, but we focused on questions 2, 7, 10, and 17. Two was, I usually am in a hurry. Seven was, I like to keep busy at all, all the time. Uh, ten was, I like things to happen quickly. And seventeen was, I feel like I am bursting with energy a lot. So the child would answer one through five on those questions. 
We were trying to prove the activity level of a child remains consistent as they age, so these questions went along well with that hypothesis. For the parents' temperament questionnaire, it was the same process done, the same questions, um, but the examiner asked the parents to try to remember what their child was like as a baby when answering the questions so we could see um, if, they, if the child remains consistent as they age. And here is the two different questionnaires. Um, as you can see, the questions are the same, just a little bit different in the wording because asking the parent, it is my child like to, and then when you're asking the child, it's I like to. The wording is also more simple on the, qu the child's questionnaire compared to the parents because the parents are able to answer more um, detailed questions. Overall, these questionnaires are meant to be simple so that the um, examiner is able to ask the questions with ease as well as the subjects be able to answer those questions and hopefully there is no room for error because of how simple the questionnaire is. For the scoring of the data, we focused on questions 2, 7, 10, and 17 as these were the questions from the study that pertain to activity level. For each of the children, both younger and older, the responses for each of the four questions were singled out, and then both the parents' responses and children's responses were totaled up. An example of what the scoring of the data looked like is shown in the image on the slide. This scoring of the data gives us the capability of comparing activity level from when a baby until now to see if activity level stayed consistent. Average percent difference between parents' response total and children's response total between all four activity questions was calculated for both the younger and older children's data as well. For the overall results, the younger children average percent difference was 23.6%. For older children, the average percent difference was 21.1%. This shows that activity level did remain fairly consistent as the percentages are low. For older children specific results, both questions two and seven shows majority had either no difference or a one point difference in activity level from when a baby to now, showing consistency in activity level. Questions 10 and 17 from the older children data also followed this pattern of majority having either no difference or a one point difference in activity level. This also shows consistency in activity level. To start with the younger children's data, uh, starting with question two, we saw that the most significant thing that we got from this was that almost half of the surveys that we had taken, there was only a one point difference in between the survey taken by the adult uh, when the child was a baby and then when the actual child is giving us that data at that younger age. So we are seeing, especially with question two, that there's not a big change that's happening. And then question seven, it's a little bit more spread out between the no difference one point and two point difference between the data, but we're still seeing that there is a significant amount that are very little differences between the original data that was collected by the parent about when the child was a baby and then the switch in the data to when we are actually interviewing them. Moving on to questions 10 and question 17. Uh, with question 10, we're seeing kind of a similar result to what we had with question 7 in the previous slide. So it's very spread out, but as we can see, the number of four point difference answers are pretty low with only it being 8.3%, which again is just proving our hypothesis that this change in between the ages uh, is not very significant. And then with question 17, we can see that 38.9% had absolutely no difference in their data, which is really important. It's just showing us that there is not a big difference in what the child said in their interview and then compared to what the adult is saying when the child was a baby. For our conclusions, our idea of our hypothesis was indeed supported in the context of our temperament study. Our hypothesis was the activity level of a child remains consistent as they age. We decided to conclude that our hypothesis was supported from our research data. In our results across the board, it was shown that both younger children and older children were answering the questions in parallel of what their parents were answering. Our data was shown in a way that represents differences in a point system between both the parents and the younger and older children. On majority of our questions, there was little to no point difference between both 
the kids and the parents for younger and older group included. And most of our questions, questions 2, 7, 10, and 17, were all asking about activity level. Both the kids answered that they were active or they were not active, and their parents answered the same way that their children did. This supports our hypothesis because if the parents and the children are answering consistently, it concludes that the activity of a child remains the same as they age. If both the parent and the child are answering the same way to these activity level, our data supports little to no difference in the way children think that they are and the way their parents think that they are in the area of the activity level in both younger and older children. Our findings fit with the temperament theory because the research shows that the majority of the time there is a one point difference or less between the answers of the child and parent. This means that children remained fairly the same over time and could predict future development, which is the idea behind the within-person approach, which the theory has transitioned to. When it comes to the field of developmental psychology, our results mean that development can actually be predicted in some capacity, which is supported by our findings. It also shows that nature is just as important as nurture when it comes to the development as many of the results remained consistent since the subjects were babies. The overall take home message is that the activity level of the majority of children does in fact remain consistent as they age. And this idea paired with the questionnaires or surveys can help predict future development of children.